Hello and welcome back to another video here on the channel. In today's video I am going to be teaching you how to install Forge, install Schematica and use Schematica. So let's uh, crack straight on with things. Um, so the first thing we want to do is we want to go to this website here which there will be a link to down in the description with every other thing we're going to download. Uh, uh, we're going to select the version of Minecraft that is newest which is uh, version 1.12.2. I know 1.13 is coming out very soon. I think by the time you watch the video it's probably already out but it's not for me now so the Forge version hasn't been released yet. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to click on download latest and we're going to go to the windows installer so you'll come up with some dodgy adverts and stuff so we're going to completely ignore this not click on anything apart from the skip add button which is going to appear up in the top corner up there so we're going to skip add and here download forge so what we're going to do is we're going to open this up so you'll see that this appears here you'll probably get this if you're on windows um, and this is an unrecognized app and it's basically saying stop you don't really know what this is it's a safe app so we're going to run anyway and over here we can now minimize this and over here we can see that we <coughs> we've got welcome to the forge the simple forge installer um for this for the version of forge we're using and here is the dot minecraft folder which is good um we're going to go to install client and we're going to click ok so this going to download some stuff over here and click ok there and that is forge now installed um, so what we're going to do is we're now going to go to our Minecraft launcher, boot this up, and we're going to go to launch options. We're going to, and it was probably most likely already made a profile. If it hasn't, you can go to add new, and you can get, scroll the whole way down, and it's generally at the bottom. Release 1.12.2 Forge, or whatever version you're using, and it'll be right down the bottom there. So we don't need to make one as it's already made one for us. And then we can select this version here, and we can boot this up. And generally on the first boot up it can be a bit slower as it's downloading all the content. Um, it's generally not as slow as it tends out to be. Yeah, it's taking a little while to boot boot up there. There we go. So as you can see, you'll get some different things appearing here as compared to usual. Uh, so this would, um, as this being the first time, it takes a little bit longer um, to do its job. Um, but there we go. Minecraft has booted up. This would work normal. So obviously all my worlds and everything stay the same. Um, you just need to be careful while using mods. Um, if you're going to load them and not load them so just be wary of that kind of thing and there's a new mods button just here okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to hop over to some more things we need to download the actual schematic and mod and the lunatic core mod i think that's how you say it i'll have to double check and i'll see you over there over there at the website okay so what we're going to do next is we're going to go to minecraft.curseforge.com and we're going to go to the search bar and we're just going to search schematica just like that and down here will appear schematica click on this and you'll see that it's got some little bits and bobs there and I'm just going to download straight away. So we've got that downloaded, it's a .exe, uh, .jar file so it's going to be a ROM file so your computer will be like, hmm, you sure about that? You are sure about it, so uh, keep it. And the other thing we are going to look for is, it's already on that website, which is uh, Lunatris, Lunatris Core, I think that's how you say it, and uh, we're just going to download that as well. So they're the two mods that we need to make Schematica run. Okay, so we're going to head over to our app data file, which if we do control, uh, no, uh, whoops, <laughs> Windows key and run, it'll bring up this little folder here, which we can go percentage, app, data, percentage, and enter. This will bring up this file here, we can go to .minecraft, and there'll be a new file called mods. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag and drop these two files here in there. So I'm just going to take this over onto my other screen, and we're going to pop this one here in and schematica just in there so there we go uh, i am going to quickly rename these as i already have copies on my computer um so i'm going to quickly take the ones and twos off um but there we go um and there we go so now we're going to load up forge again we're going to close this version of forge just in case it hasn't loaded and we're going to boot up um, the forge profile again and hopefully it should all just appear as it is. So we'll have Schematica installed. Uh, I'm just waiting for the profile to launch. There we go. So Minecraft is now booting up. <coughs> so it's loading up all the different mods. Um, so our two mods here. It needs both those mods for Schematica to work. Um, so we're going to load this up. I'm going to go to mods. And as you will be able to see, Schematica and Lucianus Core is now both on there. So we're going to go to done. And if we create a new world, and we'll just call this Schematica test. And I'll just make that a creative world. Uh, I'll just make it super flat. Done. Create new. 
and we'll quickly jump into this world and you'll be able to see that there'll be some new options in your uh, controls page so here we go and if we go to options and you go to controls and you scroll the whole way down you'll be able to see there is a new schematica section so now we're going to move on the tutorial on how schematica works Okay, so I am now back in the .minecraft folder just here, and we're going to go to the new schematics folder, which is just here. This will be an empty folder. This is where you can drag, put your schematics in. So what we're going to do is I've got a schematic over on my other screen, and I'm going to quickly drop this in. So there we go. Home of the Craft Season 3 Town Hall. So now if we go back to Minecraft, and we go back to game, you'll be able to see if we press enter, which is the default key, there will now be whatever you dropped and dragged drop and drag. I don't know what I was meant to say there, but that is now available in there and we can click on done and it'll actually load up this schematic. Um, I'll hopefully put a test schematic down in the description so if you want to try out a schematic um, you'll be able to um, see one. So as you can see this is what a schematic is. Um, it makes these blue outlines, you'll be able to fly through them because blocks aren't actually placed. Um, but this is your Minecraft Season 3 Town Hall and um, this is um, this this isn't real. Okay, so I have just, <laughs> funnily enough, my start recording button is actually my multiply button, so that's why it's all done that, weirdly. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're now going to show you how you can print this, so you don't actually have to place all these blocks yourself, this is only available in creative mode. So what I've done, my key is P, and there we go, it now says printer on down here. So if we go down here, you'll see that it actually, your hand moves without placing it, and you'll see that we do have to break these blocks that are red, but it automatically places all these blocks. So if we come over here and we start from the bottom up, you'll actually see it begins it begins to make this town hall, which is very, very cool, I have to say. Um, so we can break blocks and obviously we can place them again because there are some issues. Um, and we can work our way along. And to turn the printer off, all you have to do is just press the key again. So if I press P, there we go, it toggles the printer off. And you can stop it rendering, um, which is, for me, I've changed it to the end key, which means it actually has placed those blocks, as you can see. Um, and all the blocks have been placed in the right, correct places, which is good. Um, and I'm just going to reload this. There we go. So that's reloaded back in place. And you can now print it by pressing uh, P again. And as we can see, we can actually build this entire town hall, which is very, very cool. So there'll be a there'll be a world um, a schematic download down in the description so you can actually make um, there'll be a building or something down in the description so you can you can test test it out um, which will be good um, and if you find any issues with it please let me know down in the description I might go through a couple more things at the end of the video uh, but that's the bulk of it for now if you're interested in anything else keep watching because I'll show a few more different tips and tricks that you can use while using Schematica. Okay, so I'm now going to teach you how you can make a schematic. So you can actually get this building, and we're going to use this village as a demonstration. So the first thing we are going to do is we're going to press our star key, which could be an issue because it better not stop my recording. And if we just press that key just there, and we'll put red point, and we're going to put uh, as alpha on, and we'll flip that to on, and there is the red point, which has just appeared there. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to go back to this screen, and we can move it around a bit. So we can get it in line to the point we want it to be in. So we want that up one, and there we go. So that's the point we want there. And we also are going to want our second point. So we have basically a big box around the structure here. So we're going to click on blue point, And we'll have a look, see if it's all in the structure. As you can see it is, we can probably lower down the blue point just a bit. As you can see, there we go. And then we can click on star again. And we can click on, let's just call this village. And we click on save. And that will have now saved it to our dot schematica folder. No, not dot schematica, but our schematica folder. Okay, so as you'll be able to see, if we go to our dot schematics, uh, not dot schematic folder, our schematics folder, you'll be able to see here it is, the village schematic, which I can share with other people so they can use it themselves. Okay, so I've loaded up our village. We're just going to lower that down into the floor a little bit. Um, there we go. And we'll click done. Uh, there's also the materials button so you can see the exact amount of materials that's required um, but we won't go into that and there we go and you know what let's print it while we finish off the episode quickly run through all that and you'll see it does actually put stuff in your inventory but that's not too much of an issue um, but there we go and let's pop inside quickly do the floor and there we go our village is complete nearly there we go
Lovely. We have a village. Kind of. Actually, I don't think we've done outside. It's orange and um, it shows different colours. Um, so blue is it hasn't been placed. Red is it's the wrong thing. I think orange is if it's the... Um, uh, it's the right block but in the wrong kind of position and there we go so we've got our village done so we can just quickly turn off the schematic there we go and we have a very nice village okay so i hope this tutorial has been useful if you found it useful please share it with people you know because they might find it useful um and leave a like as it really helps out the channel and i'll see you in the next one goodbye